Happy Easter, y'all. Happy Easter. It's so beautiful to see uh, the church so full. Uh, it fills my heart with, with great joy. Now, not to get too intense too quickly, but here's a question for you. Would you be willing to die for what we celebrate today? Would you be willing to die for what we celebrate today? Today, Easter, we celebrate the fact, the fact that Jesus resurrected, that Jesus is risen. Now, let, let's recap what this actually means. But Jesus, when he was walking here on earth, had tons of followers. And they all thought he was great, right? Powerful, he was doing all these miracles, wise. His teaching moved people, and he was just a profound wisdom coming out from his mouth. He was important. He was also good compassionate, loving. But at some point, he started saying some, some kind of intense and odd things. He started saying that he himself was God. That he himself was God. And that religious authorities couldn't really wrap their heads around this, right? They didn't believe this. It seemed just too bold. And in some sense, you know, I give, I give some, some due to the religious authorities, you know, it kind of makes sense you know, if, if a random person came up to me and they were like, Hey, Father, just FYI, I am the creator of the universe. I'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah. Let me get you in touch with someone, right? <laughs> now, in defense of Jesus, though, he wasn't just saying this, right? He was also showing with his actions the fact of what he was saying was true. He was showing the power that he had, a power and a wisdom beyond imagining. Still, though, that religious authorities didn't believe in him while others did. And so uh, they were worried. They were worried that he was misleading the people. And so they decided that it would be best that he die. It would be best to kill him. And so that's what they did. They chose to crucify him. The disciples, those who had believed in him, were confused, right? They had thought, right? They were following this man, and they actually had come to believe in his bold claims, that he was indeed God, and now he was dead. So they felt that they had messed up. Right? We, we've been fooled. We, we messed up. We, we put our trust in this man, and we were wrong in putting our trust in him. But then, the most unimaginable thing began to happen. This man, whom they saw bleed to death on the cross, whom they saw be pierced, and they saw water and blood flow from his side. This man, who they saw be scourged and crowned with a crown of thorns, he appears to them. And, and they're so in awe and shock. That first, they they kind of think it's a ghost. Like, are, are we going crazy now? But yet he continues to be with them and appear to them and talk to them. And they're able to touch him and feel him and hear him and eat with him and see him eat food with them and so they realize that he is indeed god that they didn't mess up in putting their trust in him he just proved to them with, with the most powerful kind of way that indeed he is god because he is alive and so the disciples go kind of nuts after this they're like oh my gosh this guy whom we saw all these miracles and then we saw him die and we thought we were wrong and now he's alive walking with us it is god we have met god himself so they go crazy telling people about it. This guy whom we like live with for three years, he is God himself. We have met God. And, and they start just proclaiming this, right? And this start, starts causing some issues. If you read from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, let me read you a, a, few, a few excerpts here. So they're, they're preaching, right? They're preaching and the religious authorities are not happy. They just put this man to death because they didn't like what he was saying. So they gather that the, the apostles who are preaching and they call them and charge them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. And what's their reaction? It says here, But Peter and John answered them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, right? So they threatened them, hey, we're going to kill you. We're going to harm you if you don't listen to us. And they still don't let them go. So what do the disciples do? 
Uh, they don't care that they're threatened. We continue to read here uh, further on in the book of um, Acts. We see here. All right, so they keep preaching, and the, the religious authorities are not happy, so they gather them again, and they say to them, We strictly charge you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Again, what is their reaction? But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. And then, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not uh, letting this go. So what do they do? They beat them. They beat them to discourage them from doing this, right? They beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And what did the disciples do after they were beat? Then they left the presence of the council, right after they were just beat. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing. Rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer this honor for the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Being beaten, and this is not discouraging. They keep going day and day preaching because they've seen this man die and come back to life. They didn't care about threats. They were willing to die to testify to the truth that Jesus had become crucified and that Jesus is alive, risen, resurrected, that Jesus is indeed God and he has power over death. Would you be willing to die for the truth of Easter, the truth of the resurrection? As the apostles preached with such conviction, uh, some others who had not met Jesus in person, right, began to believe. And as they began to believe, they themselves began to encounter the Lord in a mysterious way. Not in the same way as the apostles because Jesus had ascended to heaven, but still. They began to encounter him. And so now, they were not just convinced because somebody else was telling them about it, but they were convinced because they themselves had met the Lord. And then they began to preach with conviction. And others had heard about it. And others began to meet the Lord. And then they began to preach with conviction. And this has been going along for 2,000 years until today. Those who call themselves Christians are those who are convinced of the Lord's resurrection, that Jesus is God and that Jesus is risen. They know Him. That's what it means to be a Christian. What about you? Are you convinced of the Lord's resurrection? Would you be willing to die for this truth? It's very easy to make our faith into something not as grandiose. Oh, I go to church and it's just a nice, loving thing. Almost as if church was a club. Like a club among many other clubs, which a lot of nice people in church is good, a good club. But the church is not a club. It's something way deeper. Way, it has to do with eternity, with eternal life, with the fact that God indeed became man and revealed himself and told us who he is and showed his love for us and invites us to respond to him in love and give our lives back to him. Are you convinced of eternal life? Or is your life with Jesus just some nice ideas to, you know, be good? There's eternity at stake here. Does the way you live your life show that you are convinced of this belief? Or is it just kind of like, more like a fairy tale in the way in which you live? I can tell you, not just from reading the Bible, that Jesus is risen, but I can tell you because I have experienced the Lord. I have met Him, and now I know Him, and I love Him. And He is the best thing that has ever happened to me. I pray that this Easter you become convinced that Jesus is risen, and that He becomes the best thing that ever happens in your life.